Well, welcome to another video. I am Debbie, the Crafty Diamond. If you are new here, welcome. If you are not new, welcome back. Today is my weekly whip and chat, and I am going to continue working on Pumpkin Village, and this is from Oraloa. This is kind of a dark painting. It's very dark oranges and some reds, so it does look a little bit darker on film. And I tried to do something about that and it just doesn't work. So hopefully you um, will not have a problem with it. Starting next week, I will be working on my November kits. And I will probably do those on my whip and chats. And then what I will do on this is just work on this on the side. Because I definitely want to continue working on it. It's not a huge painting, so I should be able to get it finished, but I have so many other whips that I want to get done as well. So I am using a decision wheel to decide what I'm going to work on each day or until I get um, a section done. So if I don't get a section done, then I will continue working on it until that one's done and then I will spin the wheel and decide what else I'm going to work on, but I'm going to be busy this upcoming week, so I don't think I will get much diamond painting done, and I will tell you all about my week, my upcoming week next week on my next week's whip and chat, because of course it hasn't happened yet, so I want to tell you all about it once it does happen. If you're not familiar with a whip and chat, that is a work in progress. And I'm just going to be chatting for a little bit and working on my diamond painting. So feel free to work on whatever that you would like. Or you can also treat this as a podcast, which I do um, from time to time whenever I am listening to other whip and chats. First of all, how is everybody doing today? I hope that you are doing well. Hope you had a great weekend and you have a good start to your week. It is Monday for me, so it will be Tuesday for you guys when you see this. And if you celebrate Halloween, or not really celebrate, but if you like to dress up and you like to give out candy and you have small kids, you take trick-or-treating, I hope that you have a wonderful evening. My kids are both grown. They're adults, so there's no trick-or-treating in our house. We would give out candy here, but we don't have any trick-or-treaters. The past three years that we have bought candy, we did not have not one. We had one trick-or-treater two years ago. And it was towards the end of the night, and so we pretty much just filled up their bucket and said, you know, have, have at it, get what you want, and we didn't want to be stuck with a bunch of candy. Then we ended up taking the candy to both of our jobs and got rid of it that way, took some candy to the kids' school and got rid of it. And so after that, we just decided we're not going to do anything, and then last year, we didn't have anybody. So we did not even buy candy this year, and my luck will be that we'll have a bunch of trick-or-treaters. But just in case, I might go today, because I have to do a little bit of shopping, run some errands, and I might go and just get a small bag of candy, and that way, if by some odd chance we have trick-or-treaters, at least I'll have something for them. I mentioned on one of my other whip and chats that we did not pass out candy anymore because of the scare that we had a few years ago, and that was at a different house. So I don't see that being a problem here. So I wouldn't mind giving out candy, but it's just there's not any small kids that's in our area over here, and we're in a very small cul-de-sac. And there are a couple of kids that I would think might go trick-or-treating, but I don't think that they do. They never have. So I'm not really worried about that. The ones that we, one we did get was from a different subdivision, which, you know, that's fine too. But 
I just don't want to be stuck with a bunch of candy again. That was not fun because we really don't eat a lot of candy. And we don't dress up. Um, we used to, when the kids were little, I would dress up with them. And Paige dressed up for a short time just to dress up because she still enjoyed it. And when she was in school, they were able to dress up. They had some restrictions on what they could wear and bring. And she always enjoyed doing it. And so I asked her this year, I said, do you want to dress up? And she said, no, she had no interest in it. So I'm like, well, that works for me, but don't wait until the last minute. And then you want me to pull something together for you. And that's happened before with my oldest. She was adamant about it. she wasn't going to dress up. And then all of a sudden she decided she wanted to. And we were all scrambling trying to put something together. But then as soon as November 1st hits, I'm going to get some of my other fall decorations out, put our Halloween things up, which all that we have is a little tree that Paige saw on Amazon. And so we got that. We'll just put that up. That won't even take five minutes. And then I've got a another decoration that I thought was really cute. I purchased that at Cracker Barrel when we were eating on one of our short trips and got that. That's on my mail, so I'll just take that down. And then I got some fall Scentsy warmers that I think I'll put up for November. I'll keep those out. I've got one other one that's a turkey. I'll put that one out. And then I do have some Halloween Scentsy wax warmers and I will go ahead and put those up and then that's the end of my decorating until the middle of November after Thanksgiving we will start decorating for Christmas I hope this year that we do get our tree early we um, get a live tree my husband always wants to wait until the second or third weekend in December, by the time we go and look for a tree, a lot of the trees are gone and they just do not fare well. And so I told him last year, I think we need to get a live tree sooner so that way we can take care of it. We can know that it's watered. It's not going to be dried out after we spend a small fortune on a tree and then a week later, we notice that the tree's dried out and it doesn't take any water. I could easily go for an artificial tree, but he wants a live tree and that's fine with me. But as long as we get it and I can actually use it at Christmas and be able to have the tree lit when we open our presents and not worry that my house is going to burn down because I have a tree that's very dry. So are you pro Christmas tree if you do celebrate Christmas? Are you pro tree for early part of November before Thanksgiving or are you tree after Thanksgiving? I know a lot of my friends, as soon as it hits November 1st, their tree goes up and they just start decorating. And I, was, I did that a couple of times when the kids were little, but it just wasn't something that I did very often. And I mainly did it for the kids, but now it's, I don't do it as much. Um, let me look for another color. I am using my credenza, which I absolutely love. But I can't, I'm not keeping up very well with where all of my drills are. I've got a large section open, which I usually don't do that either. But a lot of this is going to be some color blocking. I also have this open in hopes that it won't be as bad of a glare as it was last week. Because the glare was pretty bad. 
I do have my light pad on, so that might make more of a glare. I'm really not sure. I'm looking at it. It looks okay. I try to lighten it up when I am editing. Sometimes I can't and sometimes I can't. It really just depends. So hopefully it won't be horrendously dark. Not a lot has really happened this week. It's just gotten extremely busy, really for all of us. Paige is taking a photography class online, so she has been really busy with that, which has been a lot of fun for her. And my husband's been really busy at work. They finished up their inventory audit and they got 100% again on their inventory. So he was excited about that. And he's just been really busy trying to wrap up, starting to wrap up the end of the year. And also we are expecting some bad weather in Georgia this year is what they're saying. And so he has to make sure that they have everything available that's needed if the power goes out because he does work for a local power company and he has to make sure that if the power does go out, they've got plenty of supplies, everything that they need to restore power. Make sure you can see where I am. I guess it would help if I didn't have my, my tray there. So that's kept him pretty busy and then I've been really busy with work, working on the end of the semester, getting ready for finals, making sure my students are getting prepared and having to do just different things for the end of the year. We always have a lot of meetings, um, a lot of open houses, and that's always very busy towards the end of the semester, but even more so towards the end of the fall semester, they always gear up for the new year. So I've had a lot of that to do, and I have, I still have not gotten my classes set up for January. We're giving what's called an empty shell. It's just an empty, an empty class basically, that we have to complete, fill it in, get everything ready for, for January, for the next semester, and then we have to make sure that everything is uploaded, all of our syllabi is up, we have to make sure that we have a lesson plan, from the beginning of the semester until the end. So that's what I have to really focus on and the dates. I have to decide what date when something is due and put all of that in there. So when students have access in January to their classroom, they can go into the class and they can see everything that's due and different resources and things so it does take time to do, but a lot of my information I use from semester to semester, so I can just go in and do it that way. I can copy from another master shell that I have, but then I still have to add the dates. If we change books, I have to do all of that, PowerPoint slides and things. But I think I'm going to start on that in a week or so. I'm going to go ahead and work on my dates next week, and then I will be ready to go. So that way I can take off in, Jan in December and not have to worry that I'm having to rush and get my classes. I can just kind of sit back and relax between semesters. And just answer emails and things, but not have to worry about getting my classes together, and then I can enjoy my holiday. So that's kind of my plan. We'll see 
and how well that works. So that's kept me busy. Maddie's been really busy. She has started on a class that's going to move her towards an RN, registered nurse, and she is doing clinicals this week for her to start on the LPN. And everything that she said so far with the clinicals, she has already done as a certified nursing assistant. So she has had it pretty easy, whereas other students are kind of struggling a little bit because they're having to do the rotations and different things, and she's used to it. So that's really good for her. But she says, you know, working plus having to do all these rotations, that that is kind of wearing on her a little bit. But she does love it. I am really surprised that she does. But she loves her job. She loves helping others. And she is going to also go for radiology, which is what she's always wanted to do but she's gonna go into nursing first because that's going to be the easiest way for her to be able to stay in the hospital to make more money while she's waiting for the radiology program. And I don't think they have an opening where she has all of the credentials that she can get in until the fall of 2025. So she didn't wanna wait that long and not be able to go to school and she wanted to go ahead and do something and so she said why not nursing I'm doing that now and I can make more money and I may even stay in nursing instead of radiology so that's that would be good for her she's still planning on coming home for Christmas so we're gonna have a really nice Christmas with Maddie here and with her fiance and then with us, of course. And I'm sure that the kids will go over and see their dad. And Paige will go with them. But other than that, that's pretty much us in a little nutshell. And we're all well. Everything is going really good. We are supposed to get some bad weather and I can feel it because when the weather changes, I can tell and I can usually tell two to three days in advance. So I know that the weather is going to change. It is supposed to turn off much colder here, which is very unusual for this time of year. So I'm not exactly looking forward to that. It's like we went from a very hot summer to a very nice but very fast fall. Fall didn't last but really a week or two it seems like. And then we're going into some cold weather. So I'm not sure if we will be able to sit outside anymore after Tuesday or Wednesday of this week because it's supposed to get really cold and we're supposed to get some rain. We desperately need rain, but I'm not ready for the cold yet. And I really am not looking forward to any ice. And Atlanta, we live outside of Atlanta, but Atlanta shuts down. When they hear the word snow or ice, we are shut down for a good week. It's not like some of the states that are you know used to getting snow where they get snow and their you know life just continues but it doesn't do that so much in georgia or at least outside atlanta it doesn't i could multi-place these and i normally do i don't know what it is when i am doing a whip and chat Sometimes I will multi-place and sometimes I won't. And speaking of multi-placing, I did purchase the Diamond Art Club new metal 
or steel, I guess. Pretty independent of what we got in here. I did purchase the new multi-placers from Diamond Art Club. And I purchased a six-placer when they first came out. And then I went ahead and purchased a 10-placer. That was the largest that they had that was in stock when I was ordering something. And I do like this placer. I like how thin that it is, but I just have found, which I think is kind of strange, that I'm having to fill up my putty more than I normally do. Normally when I use a multi-placer and I've used, you know, a 10 placer and even a 15 placer, I do not have to worry about my putty as much, but it seems like with the multi-placer of Diamond Art Club, I am constantly putting putty in. I'm using the same putty that I've always used, so it is not the putty. If you have used the Diamond Art Club multi-placers, let me know how you feel about them and if you had to load your multi more times than you normally do which is fine I don't mind doing that and I do like how thin that the barrel is I'm able to manipulate it more which I do like that part of it but I'm just not sure I'm afraid they just feel so fragile that I'm afraid I might end up breaking my multi-placer and these are a little pricey so I don't really want to to keep purchasing if I'm a, if I break them I haven't broken one yet I did get a four placer I do prefer six but I went ahead and bought a four and I do like this tin placer. I like how thin it is. It's very easy to use, but it just feels a little fragile. And I am very heavy handed when it comes to placing my drills. I try a light hand, but I just always go back to heavy hand placing. And that's probably why I get my hands get tired easier, I think, because I, I do place very heavy. I've tried doing the light touch and all that and, and if I think about it then I can do it. But if I don't think about it then I'm heavy handed. But you know it kind of makes sense because whenever I write and I hold my pen I am very heavy handed doing that as well. So that probably is why I am a heavy handed diamond painter. Thinking of diamond painting, did anybody go down the rabbit hole with Diamond Art Club this past weekend on their Christmas kits that came out? I wasn't going to buy one. There really wasn't a strong interest for me until last Friday, and they got me last Friday. I did like the the fox. I thought that one was really cute. I put it in my cart, took it out of my cart. I have that one underneath my wish list, but the one that they got me on, and I kept going back and forth all afternoon on Friday, do I really need this? Do I really want it? Why do I want this? And I ended up getting Snow Castle from Randall Spangler. It is Diamond Art Club's largest diamond painting to date. It's not so bad width-wise because width-wise it's only I think either 50 or 56 centimeters. So that's not bad. But 
what is kind of rough is it is six and a half feet tall. No clue when I finish this, if I ever get it finished, where I'm going to put it. Not only while I am working on it, it's going to just have to dangle on my table. I'll probably roll it in a pool noodle and that's going to be bad enough. But when I finish it, it's going to be a lot of work. And so I don't want to just roll it back up, put it in the box or put it under a bed or something. I want to be able to show that one that I completed something that large. And I'm not sure how you would even be able to frame it. A frame would cost a lot. It would be extremely expensive. So I'm not getting just a frame frame. I'm going to see if my husband can frame it for me. And we'll do it that way. Just put you know, some backing on it. Or I may just use some of the command strips, but that may be too heavy once all of the drills are on. It's going to take up the whole wall lengthwise. And I thought about, well, I could hang it on a door, but that doesn't seem to be very safe to put it on a door. And I wouldn't put it on a door in my craft room because my dogs go in and out of my craft room door. I always just leave it open, but they're always in there, so I don't want anything on it. Don't want to put it upstairs on one of our doors. That would look a little strange, I think. So, I don't know. And I may just do it, just to have it and then keep it in the box so it is safe. But I don't know when I'm going to get to it. It's obviously not going to be this year. I will unbox it because I want to see how tall that this is. I mean, I know about six and a half feet, but I want to see for myself up against me what in the world I have done. I still haven't worked on magic potion yet. And that one is kitted up, but I have not started on it. So I need to do that one, I think, first. Since it is already kitted up, I want to get that one done first. And then I will work on that Spangler hopefully sometime next year. But I do have a lot of large canvases that's in my stash. And I kind of want to work on the older ones before I start on the Spangler. But then the fact that that one is six and a half feet, that just brings on a whole nother challenge for me. And I may go ahead and get started on it. Who knows? And I know I need to work on some of my whips that I have laying around on my table. I need to work on some of those, get those out of the way. But I do already have my plans for November and December. And I really don't want to deviate from those plans. But we'll see, because I know what I want to get finished. I want to work on a Christmas painting. I have been told by Dreamer Designs they're going to have some Christmas, new Christmas kits coming out this week and that they're also preparing for a restock very, very soon. I don't know what very, very soon is, but I want White Christmas. I want that one more than I have wanted any painting. So I hope if I do get it, if I'm lucky to get it, that I'm not disappointed with all the white. When I first saw that one, I did not want it. I thought, wow, that's so much white. I just don't think I would like it. But then I have seen people work on it and I haven't seen a finish, but I have seen progress postings. And it looks gorgeous. 
So I'm really hoping that one comes back. If it does, I'm all about it. Hopefully it will during the day and not in the middle of the night and then I miss it again. And if that one comes in, then my plans will definitely change in December of what I'm going to work on because I will definitely, I probably won't get it finished, but I will get that one started. I don't want to wait until next year to do it unless I wait until July and do it like a Christmas in July canvas or a holiday in July canvas. I think it's what it's called. I might wait until then. Just depends on when it comes in and what I want to do, but I will open it up as soon as it comes in. I'm not just going to sit on it. I'm going to at least look at it, but as long as I have it in my possession, I think I'll be okay. So hopefully that one will be one of the restocks. They're not saying, but it's been hinted around that there's been a huge demand for that one and they may bring it back. So I'm on the hunt. Also in November, Andy and I are having our Sparkle Addiction event. And on Wednesday, November the 1st, I am going to have a video to come out, just a short video kicking off our Sparkle Addiction event, and Angie's going to do the same. So be looking for that. And I had a kit up that came out on Monday or it will, since today's Monday, um, it will come out shortly, actually. And that is my kit up for the event. I am pretty sure that's what I'm going to do. I keep changing my mind a little bit on, you know, what I want to work on, but I had to go ahead and make a decision, and I am pretty confident I'm going to be doing a Mandy Manzano. I think that's going to be a lot of fun. I have not done a Mandy all year. And so I think that is going to be my plan. And it's a large one, but just looking at it, there's a lot of color blocking. There's also all of the black outline that Mandy is known for. And so that for me goes very quickly. It's also a round kit. And so I can do rounds much faster than I can squares. It is the old Diamond Art Club rounds. And I thought it was because I've had that kit for over two years. And I thought that kit when just glancing at it i thought i bet this is this has to be the old ones and i couldn't remember exactly when i bought it so i looked it up on my excel schedule and it's been two years so now i know that it was the older drills they do still have that kit. I'm not sure if it is currently in stock. It was when I checked last week, I believe. But I don't know if that would, if you purchase it, if it will be the old rounds or new rounds. I guess it would depend if they had some of the older kits in their warehouse or if they have already sold out and then when they went to make some more then that would be the new drills so you may get new drills on your older you know kits that have been i shouldn't say older kits because they've been around for a while but they would be new because they would probably have come recently from their warehouse from their distributor in china so i don't really know how that works but i'm okay with the older rounds i actually like it and kitting it up, it was kind of nostalgic because looking at how their kits used to be, 
and looking at different parts of the kit, looking at the canvas. It's just really fun to see how they've changed over the years and it's only been two years. And I have kits that I purchased in 2020 that I haven't done yet. And so that's going to be really interesting when I get to those. And I have pulled out all of my older kits from Diamond Art Club. They still seem to be fine. I am going to either work on those next year or I am going to have a D stash on my older kits because they've been sitting for so long that tells me do I not want to do them or if I just been putting them off for a reason so I have to think about that but part of it is when a new kit comes out and I look at the new kit I want to work on a new kit and not get into my stash and I need to stop doing that so I may even decide to do a decision wheel on some of the older kits and put that on there once I get caught up with all the whips I'm working on now and I thought about if I do that and if it comes up and I just have absolutely no desire to work on it I may put that in a pile for a D stash because I do want to get a better handle on my stash but I love my stash I do have more than I probably should I have a place for it so it's not really bothering me but I don't know how long that the glue will um, be okay on some of the older kits so I kind of want to go ahead and get older ones done I don't want to say that they're outdated, but they have, of course, the old drills and the rendering isn't as crisp as the rendering is now. And I don't know if Diamond Art Club always hand rendered their canvases, but they're hand rendered now. So I'm not really sure on the older ones what to expect to, because it's been so long since I've done an older kit. But it's going to be interesting when I work on my Mandy Manzano for our event. I already know, I already have a list of how I want to bling it up. Normally I don't really make a list of how I want to do it. I will just get to a certain section and then I will think this might look really good to be blinged. But I did really look at this one focused on it because this one is kind of a special canvas for me and I want it to look really good I am going to frame it for next year I'm not going to worry about it being put up for Christmas but I am going to frame it for next year so that's what I'm doing in November. I'm also going to be working on my cross stitch conversion. I'm going to be working on it more than what I normally do. I am going to be taking part in an event that is hosted by Kitting Up Kitten. I will put her information below too if you're interested in that event. It is for a cross stitch conversion for the entire month of November. So I want to see how much that I can actually get done. But I also want to continue working on my whips. So I will spend the majority of the time on my canvas for my event, for our event. And also we'll spend time on my cross stitch conversion. And I'm also going out of town for five days. And the kit for the sparkling addiction, that one is going to be too large for me to take. 
So that one won't go with me. This one can't go. The Pumpkin Village cannot go because I'm using my credenza. And I don't want to take my cross stitch conversion because that one is way too big to take. And I have to spread out when I do that one because it is so large. I don't have it rolled up. So I'm not sure exactly which one I'm going to take. It's going to be a small one. But that's really my plans for November. And when I do go out of town, I'm not going to be diamond painting very much. I might even take some of my little minis. My paint gem minis. I need to start thinking about my February event for my paint gems, which one I want to do. I'm kind of waiting because I am sure with paint gem that by January or sometime in January, they're going to have some new kits. They're always coming out with new kits. So I want to see which one that I want to do. I want to eventually have all of them, but they are a little on the pricey side, but they're always having sales. And if you are interested in a paint gem, I do have a coupon code. I am an affiliate and that would help the channel and it would also help you to save a little bit of money. So of course, there's never any expectation that you use any of my codes, but if you do want to use a code and save money, that's definitely appreciated. I did not mention, but I'm also an affiliate with Oraloa. You will save 10% with Oraloa. It used to be 15. I think they've gone down to 10% for the an affiliate code. If it was 15, still, that would be nice. But I know there was an email a while back that they were going to 10%. So I didn't need to check on that. But that code is underneath the description as well. And Oraloa has come out, or they're coming out, with some cute Christmas ones. I've seen a couple of unboxings lately. I know that Kim, Kimba's Craft, I noticed yesterday that I saw one had just been posted. I did not have a chance to look at it, but I'm definitely going to do that today. And I am all about Christmas. I want to buy all the Christmas kits, but then I only have time to do like one. But then I put them up for the next year and I only have one Christmas kit left. Actually, I have two. Two Christmas in my stash, my current stash. I want to do a one in December. That one's a snowman. So I'd like to do that one if I finish with my Mandy Manzano. Then I will work on that one. It's kind of small, so it shouldn't take very long. And I'm thinking that for my sparkle addiction event that I don't think I will get it finished by the end of November, but probably early part of December, I'll be done with it. And if I am, then I will start another kit for sparkle addiction and I will also bling that one up. So I have a lot of choices. That's one good thing about having a nice stash is that I can just go in and shop my stash. If I am working on a kit, I'm not feeling it. If I look at my other kits and I don't wanna do something, but I'm really in the mood to do something else, then I can just go and shop my own stash, kit something yet up again, and start on something else. So I think it's okay to have multiple whips. It's really up to you and your own personality. I didn't think I would ever feel comfortable with working on multiple whips, just how my personality is. But I am an Aries and Aries tends to start things and doesn't finish. And I just realized that last year. I did not realize that that was part of an Aries. I don't really follow 
the astronomy and signs and things, but I just happened to have read that. And I thought, you know what, that sounds like me. And so then I started thinking, well, I'm okay with doing more than one whip. And now I have quite a few in my stash that I've started on. I'm really enjoying this kit. This is a really nice change. It's not really large. It's only a 60 by 60. And that may be large for a lot of you, but for me, it's not that large. I should be able to finish this. If I just concentrated on this, it would have already been done. Especially with me multiplacing, it would have been done by now. But I think this one is so cute. And it's kind of cartoonish, and I don't usually do cartoon type of kits, but I really like this one. I thought it was really cute. It's not scary, but it's it's a cute witch. It has lots of pumpkins, and so it could be Halloween. It could be Thanksgiving time. Not because of the witch, but she's a little girl dressed up as a witch. And she's happy. So it's a happy canvas. I don't like to do the really dark canvases. I've seen them. I think they're really pretty. But I'm just not into the, the gothic and that kind of thing. And no shade for those of you that like those. I do think they're gorgeous. And I've looked at them, all the blacks and the browns together. And then mixed in with some red. I think they turn out really pretty, but that kind of a canvas just, I don't think is for me. I thought about trying one. I had gotten a canvas in one of my mystery box from last year and I ended up selling it and I almost decided to keep it. I thought maybe I should just keep it. And if I keep this, then maybe I'll do it and see if I really like it. And I ended up just selling it. I didn't think I was going to like it very much. But that is just me. I don't like spooky anyway. And I thought, you know, I don't know if I would even enjoy doing this. Just for the fact that I don't like spooky and dark. And to sit and try to diamond paint a theme that I don't like. I don't know how enjoyable that that would be. Even though it's just diamond painting. I love the diamond paint. I think I would really need to enjoy my canvas and not to, to just think of just do it, just to be doing it. So I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Do you have to really enjoy the canvas? Have you tried to do something that was way out of your comfort zone and then you realize, well, this is, this may be okay, but I don't know if I, I enjoy doing this one. But I don't know if I'd do it again. If that makes sense. Let's see. What else happened this week? There was something I was going to tell you guys. And I thought, I've got to tell all my friends. And I forgot what it was. Do not remember what it was I was going to tell you guys. It's just been just a busy week. I've got stuff in the house I need to work on. I'm finally deciding on my craft room what I want to purge scrapbook-wise and I'm not going to ever use. I don't like that I have this huge section open, but that is okay. I think that it will be... I will probably get, not all of this done today or tonight, but I will get some of this. I'll section this off later, but I thought just by raising the plastic up and watching where I'm putting my trays that I will be able to, to not have such a glare.
we do have with our sparkle addiction we do have a couple of event codes that we have been given from our sponsors i will put those underneath the description as well even if you are not participating in the event you can still use that code and purchase you either a canvas which we have um, out there and then from calming canvas and then we also have from DP with sparklers, we have a code. I don't think we have codes yet for other sponsors, but I will take a look and see before Wednesday. I need to get with Angie to see if she has been given any more information with any sponsors have decided the last minute for codes sometimes they will and sometimes they don't it just depends if they want you know to offer a code but there's since they are sponsoring us we definitely are just so thankful for all of our sponsors we're also very thankful for all of you guys whether you participate in the event or not just listening to videos definitely helps and you can also give me some suggestions on how to bling up my canvas once I show you what that is. I am going to call it a day today. Didn't get that much done because it looks like I did actually just looking at this. But because I was in such a large section, I almost have the one mouse. I almost have her completed. And that will definitely be done this week. Probably will get this section done. So then if I get this done, I'll be almost at the halfway point of this canvas, which will be very helpful. And um, this week, be looking out for my video that I posted on Monday for my kitting up. And then also for our kickoff on Wednesday. And then Thursday is my month end what I've done for the month of October. So be um, looking for that one. And then also on Saturday, I am going to have my whip and chat on my massive cross stitch conversion project. Hope you were able to get something done if you wanted to. Hope that you guys have a great rest of your week. And until next time, happy time in painting. Bye.